In his Chicago poems, the great American writer Carl Sandburg captured the beat of the city, its grit, swing, and swagger, so proud to be alive and coarse and strong and cunning. It's a city that gets into your head, a tempo married to storied architecture still standing from the days when the macadam streets were lit by gas lamp. Buildings such as the one in which Eddie Jensen plots the defense of murderers and mobsters and a marquee businessman by the name of Conrad Black. Truth to tell, Conrad Black isn't so big a name in this town. You can stop passers-by on the street, pose the question. No, they do not know Conrad Black. Eddie Jensen knows every inch of the case, having been brought into the defense team by Eddie Greenspan, the famed Toronto lawyer. The two Eddies, protesting the innocence of their client against the power of the American prosecutorial system. Eddie Jensen's office is right out of the movies. The light is dim. Sam Spadish, says Jensen, himself an admirer of Hollywood in its heyday and the oratory of faded criminal cases. You know, Leopold and Loeb, the rich boy murder of little Bobby Franks, the great Clarence Darrow defending. The trial of the century, the American press said. Some members of the Canadian press took to calling the black trial the trial of the century. You can't blame them. Canadians are so unused to seeing white collar cases taken before judge and jury, and black, well, black himself appears airlifted from another time. Orson Welles is Charles Foster Kane, AKA William Randolph Hearst. More than a hundred years ago, Hearst published screaming headlines in this town. Murder and mayhem stories that Americans consumed, as someone once said, like salted nuts at a bar. Kitty corner from Eddie Jensen's office rises the black power of a Mies van der Rohe skyscraper. Up on the fifth floor, four young lawyers have been working up the case for the prosecution the United States of America versus Conrad Black and three other defendants. Peter Atkinson, Jack Boltby, Mark Kipnis. It is Black who is the big fish. That's what Eddie Greenspan will call him, the big fish. Before the trial, Black was rarely present in Chicago. He owned the Chicago Sun-Times, but Lord and Lady Black chose London as their main scene, high society. The Windy City was David Radler's terrain. In his decades-long partnership with Conrad Black, Radler was the hustler, the grinder, the buy and sell guy. Such an unlikely pairing, Radler and Black, and such an unlikely outcome, the symbiosis having come unstuck. David Radler has pleaded guilty. There was fraud, he says, in the selling of the paper empire. He has testified his partner was complicit in that. It has fallen to a jury here in Chicago to decide how the story ends.